Philip Kindred Dick, December 16, 1928 to March 2, 1982, was an American writer known for his work in science fiction. His work explored philosophical, social, and political themes, with stories dominated by monopolistic corporations, alternative universes, authoritarian governments, and altered states of consciousness. His writing also reflected his interest in metaphysics and theology, and often drew upon his life experiences, addressing the nature of reality, identity, drug abuse, schizophrenia, and transcendental experiences. Dick produced 44 published novels and approximately 121 short stories, most of which appeared in science fiction magazines during his lifetime. Born in Chicago, Illinois, Dick moved to the San Francisco Bay Area with his family at a young age. He began publishing science fiction stories in 1951, at the age of 22. His stories initially found little commercial success, but his 1962 alternative history novel The Man in the High Castle earned Dick early acclaim, including a Hugo Award for Best Novel. He followed with science fiction novels such as Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? 1968 and Ubik 1969. His 1974 novel Flow My Tears, The Policeman Said won the John W. Campbell Memorial Award for Best Science Fiction Novel. Following a series of paranormal experiences in February 1974, Dick's work engaged more explicitly with issues of theology, philosophy, and the nature of reality, as in such novels as A Scanner Darkly and Valleys a collection of his non-fiction writing on these themes was published posthumously as The Exegesis of Philip K. Dick 2011. He died in 1982 in Santa Ana, California, at the age of 53, due to complications from a stroke. A variety of popular Hollywood films based on Dick's works have been produced, including Blade Runner 1982, Total Recall adapted twice, in 1990 and in 2012, Minority Report 2002, A Scanner Darkly 2006, and The Adjustment Bureau 2011. Meanwhile, the novel The Man in the High Castle 1962 was made into a multi-season television series by Amazon, starting in 2015. In 2005, Time magazine named Ubik 1969 one of the hundred greatest English-language novels published since 1923. In 2007, Dick became the first science fiction writer ever to be included in the Library of America series. <laughs> Early life Philip Kindred Dick and his twin sister, Jane Charlotte Dick, were born six weeks prematurely on December 16, 1928, in Chicago, Illinois, to Dorothy nay Kindred, 1900-1978 and Joseph Edgar Dick 1899-1985, who worked for the United States Department of Agriculture. His paternal grandparents were Irish. The death of Philip's twin Jane six weeks after their birth, on January 26, 1929, profoundly affected Philip's life, leading to the recurrent motif of the phantom twin. In his books, his family later moved to the San Francisco Bay Area. When Philip was five, his father was transferred to Reno, Nevada. When Dorothy refused to move, she and Joseph divorced. 
Both parents fought for custody of Philip, which was awarded to the mother. Dorothy, determined to raise Philip alone, took a job in Washington, D.C., and moved there with her son. Philip was enrolled at John Eaton Elementary School 1936 completing the second through fourth grades. His lowest grade was a C in written composition, although a teacher remarked that he shows interest and ability in storytelling. He was educated in Quaker schools. In June 1938, Dorothy and Philip returned to California, and it was around this time that he became interested in science fiction. Dick stated that he read his first science fiction magazine, Stirring Science Stories in 1940 at the age of 12. Dick attended Berkeley High School in Berkeley, California. He and fellow science fiction author Ursula K. Le Guin were members of the same graduating class 1947, but did not know each other at the time. After graduation, he briefly attended the University of California, Berkeley, September 1949 to November 11, 1949 with an honorable dismissal granted January 1, 1950. Dick did not declare a major and took classes in history, psychology, philosophy, and zoology. Through his studies in philosophy, he believed that existence is based on internal human perception, which does not necessarily correspond to external reality. He described himself as an acosmic panentheist believing in the universe only as an extension of God. After reading the works of Plato and pondering the possibilities of metaphysical realms, Dick came to the conclusion that, in a certain sense, the world is not entirely real and there is no way to confirm whether it is truly there. This question from his early studies persisted as a theme in many of his novels. Dick dropped out because of ongoing anxiety problems, according to his third wife Anne's memoir. She also says he disliked the mandatory ROTC training. At Berkeley, Dick befriended poet Robert Duncan and poet and linguist Jack Spicer, who gave Dick ideas for a Martian language. Dick claimed to have hosted a classical music program on KSMO radio in 1947. From 1948 to 1952, Dick worked at Art Music Company, a record store on Telegraph Avenue. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Career Topic: Early writing. Dick sold his first story, Rouge, in 1951, about a dog who imagined that the garbage men who came every Friday morning were stealing valuable food which the family had carefully stored away in a safe metal container, and from then on wrote full time. During 1952, his first speculative fiction publications appeared in July and September numbers of Planet Stories, edited by Jack O'Sullivan, and in If and the Magazine of Fantasy and Science Fiction that year. His debut novel was Solar Lottery, published in 1955 as half of Ace Double Hash D-103 alongside The Big Jump by Lee Brackett. The 1950s were a difficult and impoverished time for Dick, who once lamented, We couldn't even pay the late fees on a library book. He published almost exclusively within the science fiction genre, but dreamed of a career in mainstream fiction. During the 1950s, he produced a series of non genre, relatively conventional novels. 
In 1960, he wrote that he was willing to take 20 to 30 years to succeed as a literary writer. The dream of mainstream success formally died in January 1963 when the Scott Meredith Literary Agency returned all of his unsold mainstream novels. Only one of these works, Confessions of a Crap Artist, was published during Dick's lifetime. In 1963, Dick won the Hugo Award for The Man in the High Castle. Although he was hailed as a genius in the science fiction world, the mainstream literary world was unappreciative, and he could publish books only through low paying science fiction publishers such as Ace. Even in his later years, he continued to have financial troubles. In the introduction to the 1980 short story collection The Golden Man, Dick wrote, Several years ago, when I was ill, Heinlein offered his help, anything he could do, and we had never met, he would phone me to cheer me up and see how I was doing. He wanted to buy me an electric typewriter, God bless him, one of the few true gentlemen in this world. I don't agree with any ideas he puts forth in his writing, but that is neither here nor there. One time when I owed the IRS a lot of money and couldn't raise it, Heinlein loaned the money to me. I think a great deal of him and his wife, I dedicated a book to them in appreciation. Robert Heinlein is a fine-looking man, very impressive and very military in stance, you can tell he has a military background, even to the haircut. He knows I'm a flipped-out freak and still he helped me and my wife when we were in trouble. That is the best in humanity, there, that is who and what I love. Topic. Flight to Canada and suicide attempt In 1971, Dick's marriage to Nancy Hackett broke down, and she moved out of their house in Santa Venetia, California. Having struggled with amphetamine abuse for much of the past decade stemming in part from his need to maintain a prolific writing regimen due to the financial exigencies of the science fiction field, he allowed other drug users to move into the house. Following the release of 21 novels between 1960 and 1970, these developments were exacerbated by unprecedented periods of writer's block, with Dick ultimately failing to publish new fiction until 1974. One day in November, Dick returned to his home to discover that it had been burglarized, with his safe blown open and personal papers missing. The police were unable to determine the culprit, and even suspected Dick of having done it himself. Shortly afterwards, he was invited to be guest of honor at the Vancouver Science Fiction Convention in February 1972. Within a day of arriving at the conference and giving his speech The Android and the Human, he informed people that he had fallen in love with a woman named Janice whom he had met there and announced that he would be remaining in Vancouver. An attendee of the conference, Michael Walsh, movie critic for local newspaper The Province, invited Dick to stay in his home, but asked him to leave two weeks later due to his erratic behavior. This was followed by Janice ending her and Dick's relationship and moving away. On March 23, 1972, Dick attempted suicide by taking an overdose of the sedative potassium bromide. 
Subsequently, after deciding to seek help, Dick became a participant in Ex Calais, a Canadian Sananan type recovery program, and was well enough by April to return to California. Upon relocating to Orange County, California, at the behest of California State University, Fullerton Professor Willis McNally, who initiated a correspondence with Dick during his Ex Calais stint, he donated manuscripts, papers and other materials to the university's Special Collections Library, where they are archived in the Philip K. Dick Science Fiction Collection in the Pollock Library. During this period, Dick befriended a circle of Fullerton State students that encompassed several aspiring science fiction writers, including K. W. Jeter, James Blaylock and Tim Powers. Dick returned to the events of these months while writing his 1977 novel A Scanner Darkly, which contains fictionalized depictions of the burglary of his home, his time using amphetamines and living with addicts, and his experiences of ex Calais portrayed in the novel as New Path. A factual account of Dick's recovery program participation was portrayed in his posthumously released book The Dark-Haired Girl, a collection of letters and journals from the period. <laughs> Paranormal experiences On February 20, 1974, while recovering from the effects of sodium pentothal administered for the extraction of an impacted wisdom tooth, Dick received a home delivery of Darwin from a young woman. When he opened the door, he was struck by the beauty of the dark-haired girl and was especially drawn to her golden necklace. He asked her about its curious fish-shaped design. This is a sign used by the early Christians," she said, and then left. Dick called the symbol the "...vesicle Pisces." This name seems to have been based on his conflation of two related symbols, the Christian ichthys symbol two intersecting arcs delineating a fish in profile which the woman was wearing, and the vesica piscis. Dick recounted that as the sun glinted off the gold pendant, the reflection caused the generation of a pink beam of light that mesmerized him. He came to believe the beam imparted wisdom and clairvoyance, and also believed it to be intelligent. On one occasion, Dick was startled by a separate recurrence of the pink beam. It imparted the information to him that his infant son was ill. The Dicks rushed the child to the hospital, where his suspicion was confirmed by professional diagnosis. After the woman's departure, Dick began experiencing strange hallucinations. Although initially attributing them to side effects from medication, he considered this explanation implausible after weeks of continued hallucinations. I experienced an invasion of my mind by a transcendentally rational mind, as if I had been insane all my life and suddenly I had become sane." Dick told Charles Platt, throughout February and March 1974, Dick experienced a series of hallucinations, which he referred to as, "...the 2nd of March 74." Shorthand for February to March 1974. Aside from the pink beam, Dick described the initial hallucinations as geometric patterns, and, occasionally, brief pictures of Jesus and ancient Rome. As the hallucinations increased in length and frequency, Dick claimed he began to live two parallel lives, one as himself, Philip K. Dick and one as Thomas, a Christian persecuted by Romans in the 1st century AD. He referred to the transcendentally rational mind as zebra, God, 
and valleys. Dick wrote about the experiences, first in the semi-autobiographical novel Radio Free Albemuth and then in Valleys, The Divine Invasion and The Unfinished The Owl in Daylight The Valleys Trilogy. In 1974, Dick wrote a letter to the FBI, accusing various people, including University of California, San Diego professor Frederick Jameson, of being foreign agents of Warsaw Pact powers. He also wrote that Stanislaw Lem was probably a false name used by a composite committee operating on orders of the Communist Party to gain control over public opinion. At one point, Dick felt that he had been taken over by the spirit of the prophet Elijah. He believed that an episode in his novel Flow My Tears, the policeman said was a detailed retelling of a biblical story from the Book of Acts, which he had never read. Dick documented and discussed his experiences and faith in a private journal he called his exegesis, portions of which were later published as the exegesis of Philip K. Dick. The last novel Dick wrote was The Transmigration of Timothy Archer, it was published shortly after his death in 1982. <laughs> <laughs> Personal life Dick was married five times. Jeanette Marlin May to November 1948. Cleo Apostolides, June 14, 1950 to 1959. Anne Williams Rubenstein, April 1, 1959 to October 1965. Nancy Hackett, July 6, 1966 to 1972. Leslie Tessa. Busby, April 18, 1973 to 1977. Dick had three children: Laura Archer Dick, born February 25, 1960, to Dick and his third wife, and Williams Rubenstein; Azolda Freya Dick, now Isa Dick Hackett, born March 15, 1967, to Dick and his fourth wife, Nancy Hackett; and Christopher Kenneth Dick, born July. 25, 1973 to Dick and his fifth wife, Leslie Tessa Busby. In 1955, he and his second wife, Cleo Apostolides, received a visit from the FBI, which they believed to be the result of Cleo's socialist views and left-wing activities. The couple briefly befriended one of the FBI agents, he was physically abusive with his third wife, Anne Williams Rubenstein. After one argument in 1963, he attempted to push her off a cliff in a car, then later claimed she was trying to kill him, and convinced a psychiatrist to commit her involuntarily. After filing for divorce in 1964, he moved to Oakland to live with a fan, Grania Davis. Shortly after, he attempted suicide by driving off the road while she was a passenger. Dick tried to stay out of the political scene because of high societal turmoil from the Vietnam War, however, he did show some anti Vietnam War and anti governmental sentiments. In 1968, he joined the Writers and Editors War Tax Protest, an anti war pledge to pay no U.S. federal income tax, which resulted in the confiscation of his car by the IRS. <laughs> <laughs> Death On February 17, 1982, after completing an interview, Dick contacted his therapist, complaining of failing eyesight, and was advised to go to a hospital immediately, but did not. 
The following day, he was found unconscious on the floor of his Santa Ana, California, home, having suffered a stroke. On February 25, 1982, Dick suffered another stroke in the hospital, which led to brain death. Five days later, on March 2, 1982, he was disconnected from life support and died. After his death, Dick's father, Joseph, took his son's ashes to Riverside Cemetery in Fort Morgan, Colorado, Section K, Block 1, Lot 56, where they were buried next to his twin sister Jane, who died in infancy. Her tombstone had been inscribed with both of their names at the time of her death, 53 years earlier. He died months before the release of the first Blade Runner film. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Style and Works. Topic: <inaudible> 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 Themes. Dick's stories typically focus on the fragile nature of what is real and the construction of personal identity. His stories often become surreal fantasies, as the main characters slowly discover that their everyday world is actually an illusion assembled by powerful external entities, such as the suspended animation in Ubik, vast political conspiracies or the vicissitudes of an unreliable narrator. All of his work starts with the basic assumption that there cannot be one, single, objective reality. Writes science fiction author Charles Platt, "...everything is a matter of perception. The ground is liable to shift under your feet. A protagonist may find himself living out another person's dream, or he may enter a drug-induced state that actually makes better sense than the real world, or he may cross into a different universe completely." Alternate universes and simulacra are common plot devices, with fictional worlds inhabited by common, working people, rather than galactic elites. There are no heroes in Dick's books, Ursula K. Le Guin wrote. But there are heroics. One is reminded of Dickens, what counts is the honesty, constancy, kindness and patience of ordinary people." Dick made no secret that much of his thinking and work was heavily influenced by the writings of Carl Jung. The Jungian constructs and models that most concern Dick seem to be the archetypes of the collective unconscious, group projection, hallucination, synchronicities, and personality theory. Many of Dick's protagonists overtly analyze reality and their perceptions in Jungian terms see Lies Inc. Dick identified one major theme of his work as the question. What constitutes the authentic human being? In works such as Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, beings can appear totally human in every respect while lacking soul or compassion, while completely alien beings such as Glimming in Galactic Pot Healer may be more humane and complex than their human peers. Mental illness was a constant interest of Dick's, and themes of mental illness permeate his work. The character Jack Bolan in the 1964 novel Martian Time Slip is an ex-schizophrenic. The novel Clans of the Alphane Moon centers on an entire society made up of descendants of lunatic asylum inmates. In 1965, he wrote the essay titled, Schizophrenia and the Book of Changes, Drug use, including religious, recreational, and abuse, was also a theme in many of Dick's works, such as A Scanner Darkly and The Three Stigmata of Palmer Eldritch. Dick himself was a drug user for much of his life. 
According to a 1975 interview in Rolling Stone, Dick wrote all of his books published before 1970 while on amphetamines. A Scanner Darkly 1977 was the first complete novel I had written without speed, said Dick in the interview. He also experimented briefly with psychedelics, but wrote The Three Stigmata of Palmer Eldritch, which Rolling Stone dubs, the classic LSD novel of all time, before he had ever tried them. Despite his heavy amphetamine use, however, Dick later said that doctors told him the amphetamines never actually affected him, that his liver had processed them before they reached his brain. Summing up all these themes in Understanding Philip K. Dick, Eric Carl Link discussed eight themes or ideas and motifs, epistemology and the nature of reality, know thyself, the android and the human, entropy and and pot healing, the theodicy problem, warfare and power politics, the evolved human, and technology, media, drugs and madness. <laughs> Pen names Dick had two professional stories published under the pen names Richard Phillips and Jack Dowland. Some Kinds of Life was published in October 1953 in Fantastic Universe under byline Richard Phillips, apparently because the magazine had a policy against publishing multiple stories by the same author in the same issue. Planet for Transients was published in the same issue under his own name, the short story, Orpheus with Clay Feet was published under the pen name Jack Dowland. The protagonist desires to be the muse for fictional author Jack Dowland, considered the greatest science fiction author of the 20th century. In the story, Dowland publishes a short story titled, Orpheus with Clay Feet, under the pen name Philip K. Dick. The surname Dowland refers to Renaissance composer John Dowland, who is featured in several works. The title Flow My Tears, The Policeman Said directly refers to Dowland's best-known composition, Flow My Tears. In the novel The Divine Invasion, the character Linda Fox, created specifically with Linda Ronstadt in mind, is an intergalactically famous singer whose entire body of work consists of recordings of John Dowland compositions. <laughs> <laughs> Selected works The Man in the High Castle 1962 is set in an alternate history in which the United States is ruled by the victorious Axis powers. It is the only Dick novel to win a Hugo Award. In 2015 this was adapted into a television series by Amazon Studios. The Three Stigmata of Palmer Eldritch utilizes an array of science fiction concepts and features several layers of reality and unreality. It is also one of Dick's first works to explore religious themes. The novel takes place in the 21st century, when, under UN authority, mankind has colonized the solar system's every habitable planet and moon. Life is physically daunting and psychologically monotonous for most colonists, so the UN must draft people to go to the colonies. Most entertain themselves using perky pat. Dolls and accessories manufactured by Earth-based PP layouts. The company also secretly creates Candy, an illegal but widely available hallucinogenic drug allowing the user to translate 
Into Perky Pat if the drug user is a woman or Pat's boyfriend, Walt if the drug user is a man. This recreational use of candy allows colonists to experience a few minutes of an idealized life on Earth by participating in a collective hallucination. Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? 1968 is the story of a bounty hunter policing the local android population. It occurs on a dying, poisoned earth depopulated of almost all animals and all successful humans. The only remaining inhabitants of the planet are people with no prospects off world. The 1968 novel is the literary source of the film Blade Runner 1982. It is both a conflation and an intensification of the pivotally Dickian question, what is real, what is fake? What crucial factor defines humanity as distinctly alive versus those merely alive only in their outward appearance? Ubik employs extensive psychic telepathy and a suspended state after death in creating a state of eroding reality. A group of psychics is sent to investigate a rival organization, but several of them are apparently killed by a saboteur's bomb. Much of the following novel flicks between different equally plausible realities and the real reality, a state of half-life and psychically manipulated realities. In 2005, Time magazine listed it among the all-time 100 greatest novels. Published since 1923, Flow My Tears, The Policeman Said 1974 concerns Jason Taverner, a television star living in a dystopian near-future police state. After being attacked by an angry ex-girlfriend, Taverner awakens in a dingy Los Angeles hotel room. He still has his money in his wallet, but his identification cards are missing. This is no minor inconvenience, as security checkpoints manned by Poles and Nats, the police and National Guard, are set up throughout the city to stop and arrest anyone without valid ID. Jason at first thinks that he was robbed, but soon discovers that his entire identity has been erased. There is no record of him in any official database, and even his closest associates do not recognize or remember him. For the first time in many years, Jason has no fame or reputation to rely on. He has only his innate charm and social graces to help him as he tries to find out what happened to his past while avoiding the attention of the Poles. The novel was Dick's first published novel after years of silence, during which time his critical reputation had grown, and this novel was awarded the John W. Campbell Memorial Award for Best Science Fiction Novel. It is the only Philip K. Dick novel nominated for both a Hugo and a Nebula Award. In an essay written two years before his death, Dick described how he learned from his Episcopal priest that an important scene in Flow My Tears, the policeman said, involving its other main character, the eponymous police general Felix Buckman, was very similar to a scene in Acts of the Apostles, a book of the New Testament. Film director Richard Linklater discusses this novel in his film Waking Life, which begins with a scene reminiscent of another Dick novel, Time Out of Joint. A Scanner Darkly is a bleak mixture of science fiction and police procedural novels. In its story, an undercover narcotics police detective begins to lose touch with reality after falling victim to the same permanently mind altering drug, Substance D, he was enlisted to help fight. 
Substance D is instantly addictive, beginning with a pleasant euphoria which is quickly replaced with increasing confusion, hallucinations and eventually total psychosis. In this novel, as with all Dick novels, there is an underlying thread of paranoia and dissociation with multiple realities perceived simultaneously. It was adapted to film by Richard Linklater. The Philip K. Dick Reader is an introduction to the variety of Dick's short fiction. Valleys is perhaps Dick's most postmodern and autobiographical novel, examining his own unexplained experiences. It may also be his most academically studied work, and was adapted as an opera by Todd Machova. Later works like the Valleys trilogy were heavily autobiographical, many with 2374, the 2nd of March 74, references and influences. The word Valleys is the acronym for Vast Active Living Intelligence System. Later, Dick theorized that Valleys was both a reality generator and a means of extraterrestrial communication. A fourth Valleys manuscript, Radio Free Albemuth, although composed in 1976, was posthumously published in 1985. This work is described by the publisher Arbor House as an introduction and key to his magnificent Valleys trilogy. Regardless of the feeling that he was somehow experiencing a divine communication, Dick was never fully able to rationalize the events. For the rest of his life, he struggled to comprehend what was occurring, questioning his own sanity and perception of reality. He transcribed what thoughts he could into an 8,000-page, 1,000,000-word journal dubbed the Exegesis. From 1974 until his death in 1982, Dick spent many nights writing in this journal. A recurring theme in Exegesis is Dick's hypothesis that history had been stopped in the first century AD, and that the Empire never ended. He saw Rome as the pinnacle of materialism and despotism, which, after forcing the Gnostics underground, had kept the population of Earth enslaved to worldly possessions. Dick believed that Valleys had communicated with him, and anonymously others, to induce the impeachment of U.S. President Richard Nixon, whom Dick believed to be the current Emperor of Rome incarnate. In a 1968 essay titled, Self-Portrait, collected in the 1995 book The Shifting Realities of Philip K. Dick, Dick reflects on his work and lists which books he feels might escape World War III. Eye in the Sky, The Man in the High Castle, Martian Time Slip, Dr. Blood Money, or How We Got Along After the Bomb, The Zap Gun, The Penultimate Truth, The Simulacra, The Three Stigmata of Palmer Eldritch, which he refers to as the most vital of them all. Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, and Ubik. In a 1976 interview, Dick cited A Scanner Darkly as his best work, feeling that he had finally written a true masterpiece, after 25 years of writing. In the 1973 science fiction short story, The Pre-Persons, he criticizes American pro-abortion law. Topic Adaptations Topic Films Several of Dick's stories have been made into films. Dick himself wrote a screenplay for an intended film adaptation of Ubik in 1974, but the film was never made. 
Many film adaptations have not used Dick's original titles. When asked why this was, Dick's ex-wife Tessa said, Actually, the books rarely carry Phil's original titles, as the editors usually wrote new titles after reading his manuscripts. Phil often commented that he couldn't write good titles. If he could, he would have been an advertising writer instead of a novelist. Films based on Dick's writing had accumulated a total revenue of over US $1 billion by 2009. Blade Runner 1982, based on Dick's 1968 novel Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, directed by Ridley Scott and starring Harrison Ford. A screenplay had been in the works for years before Scott took the helm, with Dick being extremely critical of all versions. Dick was still apprehensive about how his story would be adapted for the film when the project was finally put into motion. Among other things, he refused to do a novelization of the film. But contrary to his initial reactions, when he was given an opportunity to see some of the special effects sequences of Los Angeles 2019, Dick was amazed that the environment was exactly as how I'd imagined it. Though Ridley Scott has mentioned he had never even read the source material. Following the screening, Dick and Scott had a frank but cordial discussion of Blade Runner's themes and characters, and although they had wildly differing views, Dick fully backed the film from then on, stating that his life and creative work are justified and completed by Blade Runner. Dick died from a stroke less than four months before the release of the film. Total Recall 1990, based on the short story, We Can Remember It For You Wholesale, directed by Paul Verhoeven and starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. Confessions d'un Barjo 1992, titled Barjo in its English language release, a French film based on the non-science fiction novel Confessions of a Crap Artist. Screamers 1995, based on the short story, Second Variety, directed by Christian de Guay and starring Peter Weller. The location was altered from a war-devastated Earth to a distant planet. A sequel, titled Screamers, The Hunting, was released straight to DVD in 2009. Minority Report 2002, based on the short story, The Minority Report, directed by Steven Spielberg and starring Tom Cruise. Imposter 2002, based on the 1953 story, Imposter, directed by Gary Fleder and starring Gary Sinise, Vincent D'Onofrio and Madeline Stowe. The story was also adapted in 1962 for the British television anthology series Out of This World. Paycheck 2003, directed by John Woo and starring Ben Affleck, based on Dick's short story of the same name. A Scanner Darkly 2006, directed by Richard Linklater and starring Keanu Reeves, Winona Ryder, and Robert Downey Jr., based on Dick's novel of the same name. The film was produced using the process of rotoscoping, it was first shot in live action and then the live footage was animated over. Next 2007, directed by Lee Tamahori and starring Nicolas Cage, loosely based on the short story, The Golden Man. Radio Free Albemuth 2010, directed by John Allen Simon loosely based on the novel Radio Free Albemuth. 
The Adjustment Bureau, 2011, directed by George Noel Fee and starring Matt Damon, loosely based on the short story, Adjustment Team. Total Recall, 2012, directed by Len Wiseman and starring Colin Farrell, second film adaptation of the short story, We Can Remember It For You Wholesale. Blade Runner 2049 2017, directed by Denis Villeneuve and starring Ryan Gosling and Harrison Ford, a sequel to the 1982 film Blade Runner, based on De Android's Dream of Electric Sheep. Future films based on Dick's writing include an animated adaptation of The King of the Elves from Walt Disney Animation Studios, which was set to be released in the spring of 2016. 16 but is currently still in pre-production, and a film adaptation of Ubik which, according to Dick's daughter, Isa Dick Hackett, is in advanced negotiation. Ubik was set to be made into a film by Mitchell Gondry. In 2014, however, Gondry told French outlet Telerama via CTU that he was no longer working on the project. The Terminator series prominently features the theme of humanoid assassination machines first portrayed in Second Variety. The Halcyon Company, known for developing the Terminator franchise, acquired right of first refusal to film adaptations of the works of Philip K. Dick in 2007. In May 2009, they announced plans for an adaptation of Flow My Tears, the policeman said. Television <inaudible> 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 It was reported in 2010 that Ridley Scott would produce an adaptation of The Man in the High Castle for the BBC, in the form of a miniseries. A pilot episode was released on Amazon Prime in January 2015 and Season 1 was fully released in 10 episodes of about 60 minutes each on November 20, 2015. Premiering in January 2015, the pilot was Amazon's most watched since the original series development program began. The next month Amazon ordered episodes to fill out a 10-episode season, which was released in November, to positive reviews. A second season of 10 episodes premiered in December 2016, with a third season announced a few weeks later to be released in 2018. In July 2018, it was announced that the series had been renewed for a fourth season. In late 2015, Fox aired Minority Report, a television series sequel adaptation to the 2002 film of the same name based on Dick's 1956 short story, The Minority Report. The show was cancelled after one 10 episode season. In May 2016, it was announced that a ten-part anthology series was in the works. Titled Philip K. Dick's Electric Dreams, the series was distributed by Sony Pictures Television and premiered on Channel 4 in the United Kingdom and Amazon Video in the United States. It was written by executive producers Ronald D. Moore and Michael Dinner, with executive input from Dick's daughter Isa Dick Hackett, and stars Brian Cranston, also an executive producer. <laughs> <laughs> Stage and radio Four of Dick's works have been adapted for the stage. One was the opera Valleys, composed and with libretto by Todd Machova, which premiered at the Pompidou Centre in Paris on December 1, 1987, with a French libretto. 
It was subsequently revised and readapted into English, and was recorded and released on CD Bridge Records BCD 9007 in 1988. Another was Flow My Tears, The Policeman Said, adapted by Linda Hartinian and produced by the New York-based avant-garde company Mabu Mines. It premiered in Boston at the Boston Shakespeare Theatre June 18 to 30, 1985 and was subsequently staged in New York and Chicago. Productions of Flow My Tears, The Policeman Said were also staged by The Evidence Room in Los Angeles in 1999 and by the Fifth Column Theatre Company at the Oval House Theatre in London in the same year. A play based on Radio Free Albemuth also had a brief run in the 1980s. In November 2010, a production of De Android's Dream of Electric Sheep, adapted by Edward Einhorn, premiered at the 3LD Art and Technology Center in Manhattan, a radio drama adaptation of Dick's short story, Mr. Spaceship, was aired by the Finnish broadcasting company Radio in 1996 under the name Menelipu Paratisian. Radio dramatizations of Dick's short stories Colony and the Defenders were aired by NBC in 1956 as part of the series 10-1. In January 2006, a The Three Stigmata of Palmer Eldritch English for TRZY Stigmati Palmyra Eldritcher theatre adaptation premiered in Stary Teatr in Krakow, with an extensive use of lights and laser choreography. In June 2014, the BBC broadcast a two part adaptation of Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep on Radio 4. Starring James Purefoy as Rick Deckard. Topic: Comics. Marvel Comics adapted Dick's short story, The Electric Ant, as a limited series, which was released in 2009. The comic was produced by writer David Mack Daredevil and artist Pascal Alex Ultimate X-Men, with covers provided by artist Paul Pope. The Electric Ant had earlier been loosely adapted by Frank Miller and Geoff Darrow in their three-issue miniseries Hard Boiled published by Dark Horse Comics in 1990-1992. In 2009, Boom! Studios started publishing a 24-issue miniseries comic book adaptation of De Android's Dream of Electric Sheep. Blade Runner, the 1982 film adapted from De Android's Dream of Electric Sheep, had previously been adapted to comics as a Marvel Comics super special, Blade Runner. In 2011, Dynamite Entertainment published a four-issue miniseries, Total Recall, a sequel to the 1990 film Total Recall, inspired by Philip K. Dick's short story, We Can Remember It For You Wholesale. In 1990, DC Comics published the official adaptation of the original film as a DC movie special, Total Recall. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Alternative formats. In response to a 1975 request from the National Library for the Blind for permission to make use of the man in the High Castle, Dick responded, I also grant you a general permission to transcribe any of my former, present or future work, so indeed you can add my name to your general permission list. Some of his books and stories are available in Braille and other specialized formats through the NLS. 
As of December 2012, 13 of Philip K. Dick's early works in the public domain in the United States are available in ebook form from Project Gutenberg. As of April 4, 2012, Wikisource has one of Philip K. Dick's early works in the public domain in the United States available in ebook form, which is not from Project Gutenberg. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Influence and Legacy. Lawrence Sutin's 1989 biography of Dick, Divine Invasions, A Life of Philip K. Dick, is considered the standard biographical treatment of Dick's life. In 1993, French writer Emmanuel Carrère published Je suis vivant et vous êtes morts which was first translated and published in English in 2004 as I Am Alive and You Are Dead, A Journey into the Mind of Philip K. Dick, which the author describes in his preface in this way, The book you hold in your hands is a very peculiar book. I have tried to depict the life of Philip K. Dick from the inside, in other words, with the same freedom and empathy, indeed with the same truth, with which he depicted his own characters. Critics of the book have complained about the lack of fact-checking, sourcing, notes and index. The usual evidence of deep research that gives a biography the solid stamp of authority. It can be considered a non-fiction novel about his life. Dick has influenced many writers, including Jonathan Lethem and Ursula K. Le Guin. The prominent literary critic Frederick Jameson proclaimed Dick the Shakespeare of science fiction and praised his work as one of the most powerful expressions of the society of spectacle and pseudo-event." The author Roberto Bolaño also praised Dick, describing him as, "...Thoreau plus the death of the American dream." Dick has also influenced filmmakers, his work being compared to films such as The Wachowskis' The Matrix, David Cronenberg's Videodrome, Existence, and Spider, Spike Jones's being John Malkovich, Adaptation, Michel Gondry's Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, Alex Proyas's Dark City, Peter Weir's The Truman Show, Andrew Nichols' Gattaca, In Time, Terry Gilliam's Twelve Monkeys, Alejandro Amanabar's Open Your Eyes, David Fincher's Fight Club, Cameron Crowe's Vanilla Sky, Darren Aronofsky's Pie, Richard Kelly's Donnie Darko and Southland Tales, Rian Johnson's Looper, Duncan Jones' Source Code, and Christopher Nolan's Memento and Inception. The Philip K. Dick Society was an organization dedicated to promoting the literary works of Dick and was led by Dick's longtime friend and music journalist Paul Williams. Williams also served as Dick's literary executor for several years after Dick's death and wrote one of the first biographies of Dick, entitled Only Apparently Real, The World of Philip K. Dick. The Philip K. Dick estate owns and operates the production company Electric Shepherd Productions, which has produced the film's Adjustment Bureau 2011 and the upcoming Walt Disney Company film King of the Elves, the TV series The Man in the High Castle and also a Marvel Comics five-issue adaptation of Electric Ant. Dick was recreated by his fans in the form of a simulacrum or remote control android designed in his likeness. Such simulacra had been themes of many of Dick's works. The Philip K. Dick simulacrum was included on a discussion panel in a San Diego Comic Con presentation about the film adaptation of the novel, A Scanner Darkly. In February 2006, an America West Airlines employee misplaced the android's head, and it has not yet been found. 
In January 2011, it was announced that Hansen Robotics had built a replacement. Topic: <laughs> Film. BBC Two released in 1994 a biographical documentary as part of its Arena Arts series called Philip K. Dick: A Day in the Afterlife. The Gospel According to Philip K. Dick was a documentary film produced in 2001. The Penultimate Truth About Philip K. Dick was another biographical documentary film produced in 2007. The 1987 film The Trouble with Dick, in which Tom Villard plays a character named Dick Kendred. C.F. Philip Kindred Dick, who is a science fiction author. The dialogue of Nikos Nikolaidis's 1987 film Morning Patrol contains excerpts taken from published works authored by Philip K. Dick. The Spanish feature film Proxima 2007 by Carlos Atanes, where the character Felix Cade CQ is based on Dick. A 2008 film titled Your Name Here, by Matthew Wilder, features Bill Pullman as science fiction author William J. Frick, a character based on Dick. The 2010 science fiction film Fifteen Till Midnight cites Dick's influence with an acknowledgement to the works of credit. The Prophets of Science Fiction episode, Philip K. Dick. 2011 documentary In 2013, a Kickstarter campaign was set up for a short film called The Crystal Crypt, based on Dick's short story of the same name. In fiction Michael Bishop's The Secret Ascension 1987, currently published as Philip K. Dick is Dead, Alas, which is set in an alternative universe where his non-genre work is published but his science fiction is banned by a totalitarian United States in thrall to a demonically possessed Richard Nixon. The Faction Paradox novel of The City of the Saved 2004 by Philip Purser Hallard The short story, The Transmigration of Philip K. 1984 by Michael Swanick to be found in the 1991 collection Gravity's Angels. In Ursula K. Le Guin's 1971 novel The Lathe of Heaven, whose characters alter reality through their dreams. Two made-for-TV films based on the novel have been made, The Lathe of Heaven 1980 and Lathe of Heaven 2002. In Thomas M. Discher's The Word of God 2008, the comics magazine Weirdo published, The Religious Experience of Philip K. Dick, by artist R. Crumb in 1986. Though this is not an adaptation of a specific book or story by Dick, it incorporates elements of Dick's experience which he related in short stories, novels, essays, and the exegesis. The story parodies the form of a chick tract, a type of evangelical comic, many of which relate the story of an epiphany leading to a conversion to fundamentalist Christianity. In the Batman Beyond episode, Centuries of the Last Cosmos, the character Eldon Michaels claims a typewriter on his desk to have belonged to Philip K. Dick. In the 1976 alternate history novel The Alteration by Kingsley Amos, one of the novels within a novel depicted is the man in the high castle mirroring the grasshopper lies heavy in the real-life novel, still written by Philip K. Dick. 
Instead of the novel being set in 1962 in an alternate universe where the Axis powers won the Second World War and named for Hawthorne Benson, the author of its novel within a novel, it depicts an alternate universe where the Protestant Reformation occurred events including the continuation of Henry VIII's schismatic policies by his son, Henry IX, and the creation of an independent North American America in 1848, with one character speculating that the titular character was a wizard. In the Japanese science fiction anime Psycho Pass, Dick's works are referred to as recommended reading material to help reflect on the current state of affairs of those characters' world. The 2016 video game Californium was developed as a tribute to Philip K. Dick and his writings to coincide with an arts documentary series. The short film trilogy Code 7 written and directed by Nacho Vigalondo starts with the line, Philip K. Dick presents. The story also contains some other references to Philip K. Dick's body of work. Topic: <laughs> Music. Flow My Tears is the name of an instrumental by bassist Stuart Ham, inspired by Dick's novel of the same name. The track is found on his album Radio Free Albemuth, also named after a Dick novel. Flow My Tears, The Policeman Said, and other seminal P.H. K. Dick novels inspired the electronic music concept album, The Dowland Shores of Philip K. Dick's Universe, by Levant. Flow My Tears The Spider Said, is the final song on They Were Wrong, So We Drowned, the second album by experimental Los Angeles punk rock outfit Liars. Listen to the Sirens, the first song on Tubeway Army's 1978 debut album has as its first line, Flow My Tears, the new police song. American rapper and producer LP is a noted fan of Dick and other science fiction, as many of Dick's themes, such as paranoia and questions about the nature of reality, feature in LP's work. A song on the 2002 album Fantastic Damage is titled, T.O.J., and the chorus makes reference to the Dick work time out of joint. English singer Hugh Cornwell included an instrumental called Philip K. Ridiculous on his 2008 album Hoover Dam. The World Inferno Friendship Society's 2011 album The Anarchy and the Ecstasy includes a song entitled Canonize Philip K. Dick, OK. Block Party's 2012 album 4 contains several references to Dick's work, including a song entitled, V.A.L.I.S. German singer Pullman included a song called, Roy Batty, in tribute to Philip K. Dick, on his 2013 album Nick's Orna Grund. Sister, a Sonic Youth album was in part inspired by the life and works of science fiction writer Philip K. Dick. What You See is a song by Faded Paper Figures that pays homage to the literary work of Dick. The first song on Japancake's debut album If I Could See Dallas is titled Now Wait for Last Year. Janelle Monor's song Make the bus. In her album The Archandroid has the lyrics, You've got Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep under your pillow. At the end of the first stanza, Blind Guardian's song, Time What Is Time, 
From the 1992 album, Somewhere Far Beyond is loosely based on the book, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? Radio In June 2014, BBC Radio 4 broadcast The Two Georges by Stephen Keyworth, inspired by the FBI's investigation of Phil and his wife Cleo in 1955, and the subsequent friendship that developed between Phil and FBI agent Scruggs. Topic Theatre. The short play *Kindred Blood* in Kensington Gore, 1992, by Brian W. Aldiss. A 2005 play, *800 Words: The Transmigration of Philip K. Dick* by Victoria Stewart, which reimagines Dick's final days. Topic: Contemporary philosophy. Postmodernists such as Jean Baudrillard, Frederick Jameson, Lawrence Rickles, and Slavoj Žižek have commented on Dick's writings' foreshadowing of postmodernity. Jean Baudrillard offers this interpretation: It is hyperreal. It is a universe of simulation, which is something altogether different. And this is so not because Dick speaks specifically of simulacra. SF has always done so, but it has always played upon the double, on artificial replication or imaginary duplication, whereas here the double has disappeared. There is no more double, one is always already in the other world, another world which is not another, without mirrors or projection or utopias as means for reflection. The simulation is impassable, unsurpassable, checkmated, without exteriority. We can no longer move through the mirror to the other side, as we could during the golden age of transcendence. For his anti-government skepticism, Philip K. Dick was afforded minor mention in Mythmakers and Lawbreakers, a collection of interviews about fiction by anarchist authors. Noting his early authorship of The Last of the Masters, an anarchist-themed novelette, author Margaret Kiljoy expressed that while Dick never fully sided with anarchism, his opposition to government centralization and organized religion has influenced anarchist interpretations of Gnosticism. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Awards and Honors. The Science Fiction Hall of Fame inducted Dick in 2005. During his lifetime, he received numerous annual literary awards and nominations for particular works. Hugo Awards Best Novel 1963 Winner, The Man in the High Castle 1975 nominee, Flow My Tears, The Policeman Said Best Novelette 1968 nominee, Faith of Our Fathers Nebula Awards Best Novel 1965 nominee, Dr. Blood Money 1965 nominee, The Three Stigmata of Palmer Eldritch 1968 nominee, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep 1974 nominee, Flow My Tears, The Policeman Said 1982 nominee, The Transmigration of Timothy Archer John W. Campbell Memorial Award Best Novel 1975 Winner, Flow My Tears, The Policeman Said 
British Science Fiction Association Award Best Novel 1978 winner, A Scanner Darkly Growly Door Festival de Metz, France 1979 winner, A Scanner Darkly Kurd Lavitz Price 1985 winner Valleys Topic. Philip K. Dick Award The Philip K. Dick Award is a science fiction award that annually recognizes the previous year's best SF paperback original published in the U.S. It is conferred at Norweskin, sponsored by the Philadelphia Science Fiction Society, and since 2005 supported by the Philip K. Dick Trust. Winning works are identified on their covers as Best Original SF Paperback. It is currently administered by David G. Hartwell and Gordon Van Gelder. The award was inaugurated in 1983, the year after Dick's death. It was founded by Thomas Disk with assistance from David G. Hartwell, Paul S. Williams, and Charles N. Brown. Past administrators include Algus J. Budrys and David Alexander Smith. Topic. See also Consensus reality Cyberpunk Paranoid fiction Transcendental idealism